Hey guys, um, it's five in the morning and I couldn't stop thinking about Billie Eilish like I do 24 seven. I literally can't stop thinking about her. So I decided to, to, to talk about her music today in the form of a review of the new album, which is just new relatively speaking. I mean, it's the newest album she has made happier than ever. And I realized while sitting awake that there's no way to talk about happier than ever than comparing it to and talking about the Billie Eilish who made the album Whenever We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Her debut album. She made an EP before that, but that was her first album. And that album was the sound of a new artist trying to capture the attention of everyone around her, desperately trying to prove creati cre creatively and emotionally that she is one, a great songwriter, a great singer, and that she musically stands out from the rest of the people in the pop music world. And I think with that album, she successfully did that. She was hungry, she was young, and she was passionate to just capture everyone's hearts and minds. And I mean, she did that on the biggest scale possible. And when she made this album, she was a completely different person. She's like the number one most popular person. She had like four Grammys. She won, you know, record of the year, song of the year, and album of the year, and best new artist in the same. Like, she like broke records. She's the first female to do that. Like, and she's the youngest artist to win some of those awards. I mean, she's like a teenager, and she did this. And so she, I mean, the fame has very obviously affected her in this album called Happier Than Ever with these songs that just exude so much confidence, not just in the lyrical content, but also just in the general tone and even in the production. Look no further than Everything I Am, which is a song that shows so much confidence in its production and in Billie Eilish's persona and performance on it, in that she's kind of doing a gimmick, kind of doing a trick that almost sounds like something that would be on whenever uh, people fall asleep or, or whenever I fall asleep, where do I go? Or I don't remember the name of the album exactly. It almost sounds like something like a bury a friend type of vibe, sort of. But instead of using it to be creepy, um, she's using it to just exude confidence in the most, I don't care what you say, uh, I don't care kind of vibe possible. You could even look at the um, subject matter of the song Your Power, and it's not like musically Billie Eilish hasn't done songs like this, like more stripped back. Like um, whenever people fall asleep had a song, whenever we fall asleep had a song where, um, I don't remember the song exactly, a really slow ballad that had a suicidal edge to it, which some of her music has had is referenced suicide. And it's a very devastating song. And this is a song where she's like, you know, slow guitar song, pr pretty simple musically. It's doing the same thing. And she's like, I'm going to sing about um, the abuse of power but that a male figure can possess kind of in the, the kind of in lieu of the Me Too movement, I would say. And that kind of, it's got that kind of vibe, that kind of energy of you know, calling somebody out and being like, don't abuse your power. You thought she was your age, stuff like that. And it's just subject matter that I don't think she would be singing about if she didn't have this position. She's this, this song, the lyrical content of this song is affected by, I am in a position where people can listen to me. I have an opinion in her, you know, she's massive in interviews. Everyone wants to hear what I have to say. And this is what I'm going to say. And it's, you know, the most, one of the most predictable things that you could talk about as a female artist, not saying it's something that you shouldn't talk about, but it is a predictable move. And the old Billie Eilish wasn't predictable. The, whenever people fall asleep, whenever we fall asleep, I'm going to keep saying it wrong. I apologize for that. Um, she, she took a lot of risks. She tried to stand out and this is not doing that as much. And just as a whole, the album has a much more relaxed and comfortable tone than um, whenever we fall asleep. 
it, it just feels like it's just a, a much more comfortable album. The album kind of sets into a groove and kind of stays in that groove for, I believe, almost an hour, 56 minutes. And once it gets started, it, it almost tries to stay in that lane of just kind of it just feels a little bit a little bit woozy a little bit hazy like a little bit less just like just less passionate in general less like she's trying to prove herself and more like i'm comfortable with who i am and sometimes that you know that's kind of explicit just in the her bravado on some of these songs you got billy bossa nova oxytocin a um a, a sexual banger you could say I'm not a big fan of all of the lyrical content. Some of the blasphemous lyrical content as a Christian that bothers me and makes me not even want to listen to the song. But the production is, um, it's a bit punchy. The The production on that one is one of the moments where Phineas goes a little bit hard on the track list. Goldwing is a unique moment on the album that I really like. Like in the, the build up that moment where she's like, Goldwing, and then it like cuts or jumps and it's like gold wing gold and it kind of just does that over and over again and then to the build up and then it, it's not as good after the build up but um and it, it leads into the song lost cause which guys as i've said this is one of those songs and if you've seen the music video where it's just billy eilish just being like bro i made it she's like i can do whatever i want I'm very comfortable. It's one of those, it's a, like a comfortable, fun song that is so annoying. Like, it's it's not a good song. It, it, it doesn't sound good. She doesn't sound good. The music is just kind of blah. I, I'm like, I don't care, man. And then you have My Future, which is a song, once again, that doesn't feel like Billie Eilish doing anything crazy. It feels like she's more comfortable. She's definitely a little bit more optimistic than normal in the lyrics. But it's a really nice song, and it's one of my favorite Billie Eilish songs. Easily one of my favorites on this album. Um, if not my favorite on the album. Like, and I've liked it just more and more. I, you know, I liked it as a single, but the more I listen to it, the more I like it. The way the music changes, it's got a music switch where it gets even more optimistic and upbeat musically. And it's just a fun, enjoyable song that's well-written, sounds good, musically it's good. It, it's plain and simple, it's just a good song. Second half of the album, uh, which kicks off with the song Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet, guys, I'm sure people absolutely love this song, but it's not super memorable to me personally. Like, once again, musically, this album is nearly as adventurous or, or punchy or potent. I mean, her lyricism and her lyrics are not as effective and um emotionally like powerful as they are on her first album in my opinion but Haley's comet doesn't do a lot for me on a personal level not my responsibility is a really ballsy track in that it literally and once again this is a this is a creative move that i don't think she would do until she has this platform until she has this level of popularity which is a spoken monologue where she's like uh, uh, it's my body um you can't criticize it um, I'm happy with my body. And it's like that kind of vibe. But, um, I actually really like this song, surprisingly. I, I just like how, I like how, I like, I like the confidence of this one. And I like that she's willing to do a spoken word track. And I really like the instrumental in the background. I think it's one of the best instrumentals on the whole album. And, you know, I don't even care that there's spoken word over it. Spoken word doesn't bother me when you have a good instrumental in the background, guys. Like, a spoken word album was my album of the year last year. Like, come on. I really like that instrumental and overheated, one of the better tracks in the second half of this album. Everybody Dies is just forgettable. It is, I mean, I, I literally like, I, I can't remember anything about it. It's one of those songs where you listen to it and then you listen to the next song, which on this thing is Your Power, which is way more memorable. A much better song in my opinion. And you know, earlier I sounded kind of critical of Your Power, but I do think it's a, actually is a pretty good song. And uh, musically, vocally... Even, even lyrically, even though I think the subject matter is a little bit tired at this point in 2021, like, other other people beat you to the punch, Billie Eilish, but um, maybe when it came out as a single, it was more relevant. It was, a, a, you know, more of the time, but now it feels a little bit tired. But, um, yeah, 
the, everybody dies is whatever. NDA is musically kind of adventurous, kind of cool. One of the more adventurous songs musically on the album. Then there's Therefore I Am. Happier Than Ever is a really good title track that, once again, it's kind of musically more diverse. Lyrically, it's good. Vocally, it's good. It's a good song. And that last song, Male Fantasy... I don't really know where to where to go with this like heads or tails. It almost sounds like she's trying to diss men, which is absolutely not a ridiculous claim or interpretation of the song given what she has said earlier and knowing Billie Eilish as a personality. Um also and it's kind of hard to let my my um Opinions on Billie Eilish as a person, like, come to the surface in this video because she is, like, one of my least favorite celebrities. Like, Billie Eilish has grown really insufferable. She was kind of annoying even when, when we, when we fall asleep, Where Do We Go came out. But since then, she has just kind of, she's gotten cocky and annoying, and I don't like her in interviews. I know people love her, and I think she's just kind of, like, she's kind of cringy, honestly. In, in a lot of the things she says and does. And I'm just kind of... I'm kind of whatever on her as a person. And, and you know, her personality and her some of her views come through on the album and the lyrics. And on this song. And, you know, musically the song sounds fine. But it, it's not doing a lot for me. This whole review sounds very negative. It sounds very negative. But... This album has a consistent tone. It really does. And I respect that so much. Like, it, I really do feel, when you when I listen to this album, it's over. The, those 56 minutes go by really fast. Because, like, you're kind of in the album when you're in it. And there's specific moments that are, like, keystones on the album that kind of keep you in there. Like, Not My Responsibility is, is such a standout just in terms of that music and even the approach of doing, like, a spoken word. That goes over pretty well. Those first, uh, those first couple of tracks, "Getting Older" is a really good opener, like leading into "I Didn't Change My Number," and the album. I mean, the album has some songs that I don't care for, especially "Lost Cause" right in the heart of the record. I, I don't care for that one at all. But there's a few moments on the album that I can call bad, like very few moments. There's a few really great moments and songs. And things, but the album is rarely ever. I mean, the, the only song I think on the album that I really dislike is it. It's only I mean, you know, even though everybody dies is really forgettable. The only song that I actually dislike on the album is um, outright is lost cause. Even oxytocin, a song that I do take issue with, has um, you know, it it's got really good production, really good music, so. Guys, I'm going to have to give the album a 3.5 out of 5. This is one of my longer reviews in a while, and I think it absolutely deserves it. This is an album that I, and frankly, I did not go in-depth enough. I did not talk about these songs to the extent which they could be talked about. You could do like an hour-long video dissecting this and comparing this to when we fall asleep, and which I don't always do. I, I don't always like, that's not how I review things generally. I, I'm not like just comparing stuff to other stuff by the same artist as points of like comparison and even criticism. But I felt like that was absolutely, because I've listened to When We Fall Asleep um, a bunch of times, even though I haven't reviewed it on the channel. Oddly enough, um, I just have a, I have a, you know, a long list of albums to review, a very long list. So... Thanks for watching the video. Do you like this album? If you do, do you dislike this album? Uh, how does this one compare to When We Fall Asleep? I would like to know because it sounds like the general and critical consensus is that this is better when we all fall asleep, even though it's nearly as popular or successful. It sounds like people like this one more. So let me know down in the description. Have a great rest of your day.